is Five Cigars That Made My Career. Today we're with the Godfather, the namesake of <laughs> Ernesto Perez Carrillo Cigars, EPC Cigars, Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Great to have you with Great, us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So a, a quick look back uh -huh. at the five cigars that made a difference to you over the course of yeah, however many years it's been since you were blending, you were working for your father in the factory, or even just as somebody who appreciated a good smoke. So we, we wanted to sit here and, and Gary and I want to pick your brain a little bit and say, you know, let's look back at those milestone cigars. Mm -hmm. The cigars that really made a difference to you or that you feel just made a difference out there. It was an important turning point for whether it be for La Gloria, for EPC cigars, and, and a, a short, uh, something interesting that you think people should need to know about that cigar and why it was so important at that point in time. That's, uh, you know, that's, I, I would have to say probably the, you know, I mean, I started with my father back in 1970. Mm -hmm. And in 1980, when he passed away, mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of very limited to what, you know, we could blend as far as tobacco. And in 1980, I took over the company. And although I worked for him for, you know, all those years, you know, we, I still had that experience with cigars outside of what we were making. Sure. So in 1982, uh, a gentleman used to work with me. He brought back from, um, he went on to a trip to England and he gave me a five pack or three pack or something of the uh, Davidoff Dom Perignon from Cuba. Mm -hmm. And, you know, realistically, I have to say that, you know, that cigar kind of, you know, woke me up and said, hey, there's something out there that you're not familiar with. Huh. Uh, so, I mean, it, it was a great cigar. I remember I was smoking, it was sitting down, and when I tried to get up, it was smooth, mild, but when I tried to get up, you know, it was, wait, <laughs> what happened here, you know? <laughs> so that kind of said, wait a minute, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to find your niche. You have to do something that's different than what you're doing now right. if you want to succeed in this business. We had just started, I just started you know, promoting La Gloria Cubana. And basically from that time to about 1990, 91, was when I was able to really do something to, I guess you could say, come, on, come out on my own. Sure. And that was because I, I was, um, I started working with some Nicaraguan tobacco from the, uh, ASP family, mm -hmm. and this completely changed the whole way mm -hmm. I was blending cigars. You know, before in Miami, basically we, everybody, most everybody would blend using uh, Dominican, mm -hmm. uh, Brazilian, Matafina, mm -hmm. Cameroon yeah. wrapper, Connecticut right. wrapper, you know, those were basically the blends. So when I added this leaf of Nicaragua, it just changed the whole, mm. you know, complexion of the cigar. That's something. And I had tried something from Nicaragua way before yeah. I remember I was sitting one day with uh, Carlitos Fuente and, and uh, Cucho Oliva, mm -hmm. who was really my godfather, you know, he okay. was a great guy. Yeah. And we smoked some of the Flor de Orlandos that were made in Nicaragua by the Fuentes family years ago. And that was an amazing cigar, you know. And uh, so I always wanted to get some of that Nicaraguan tobacco. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the first blends that we made with that and La Gloria Cubana, I think, you know, that's what got us the notoriety in Cigar right. Aficionado, where we got the high ratings. And that was the Wavell, correct? It was a Wavell, right. yeah. So that was one of the, uh, you know, first cigars that really impressed me. And then, of course, the Wavell, when I started smoking, I said, you know, this is what I'm looking for. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I, wanna, I think how prophetic that was, because you had that Nicaraguan leaf way back when. About now, 1990. 91. Yeah, and now Nicaragua is it. Yeah, I mean it's mm -hmm. it's the place. Well, we also made at that time. I think it, it's uh, you know a uh, all Nicaraguan uh, cigar called Rico Habano. Right. Oh, right. Okay. You know, so that was also part of the blends. Unfortunately, at that time, you know, it, it wasn't really. It was a too strong a cigar for the market. Yeah, it just was like La Gloria. It was strong. Was, yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah. So you know, but those that cigar, the Rico Habano, the the uh, the original Gloria Cubana, mm -hmm. and then of course. I have to say the inch, you know, mm -hmm. that's a cigar also that people, you know, they may think, well, he made a big green gauge cigar just to, you know, be different or whatever. But that wasn't the case. That was something that, you know, mm -hmm. I really worked on that blend and we've been working on, I've been working on it for, for uh, you know, for a time. 
So I decided to say, you know, let's bring it out for the IP, for the RTDA at that time. Right. Yeah. So that was also a very special cigar, you know, uh, for me. So it was if it was the Cuban Davidoff, Davidoff mm -hmm. that, that kind of sparked that something to you. Do you do you think there's a, a a potential future value to using Cuban tobacco, or is it already? It's kind of a known quantity. There's still a lot of there's still a lot to do with Nicaraguan and Dominican and. Honduran and Sumatra. Well, I, th I think, you know, I think, you know, each, each country, you know, the, the secret of tobacco, okay, is the soil. Mm -hmm. That's basically why, you know, you, we may use the same seeds in Dominican, Nicaragua, Honduras, Cuba, wherever, but they're going to come right. out differently because of the soil. Sure. And it's not just the soil of the whole country. It's the soil of a certain area right. of that country that's going to make you know, growing tobacco there uh, be different. So I do think that, you know, in the future, if it ever happens, you know, that's going to be another uh, venue, you know, blending Nicaraguan, Dominican, Cuban cigars, uh, I'm sorry, Cuban tobaccos, right. Honduran. I think that's going to be very exciting if that ever, you know, happens. Mm -hmm. So you got some plans in mind? <laughs> I, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> There is a uh, there is a saying in Spanish which I'm not going to repeat because it has, but you know there there's there's I mean I like to see that I like to be able to someday do that, but I think there's still uh, you know a long ways to go like sure. you were saying in blending Nicaraguan mm -hmm. and Dominican and Honduran tobaccos. Okay. So. Now as far as the La Gloria and the La Gloria Wave Valve, when somebody or you hear from somebody that they say that was my first serious cigar. That's how I knew that I really enjoyed cigars yes. and I really wanted to get into cigars. What, what's your takeaway when you hear that from cigars? Well, you know, definitely it's, it's, it's a cigar that for its time, you know, it did cost a lot of, you know, uh, excitement in the market. You know, it, it opened up to a certain degree a uh, little Havana uh, where people, you know, during mm -hmm. that time there were a lot of factories that opened up right. in little Havana. And I think that had a lot to do with the, the ratings with the cigar aficionado to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because before that, you know, people don't realize before that in the early 70s, there were about 26, 30 cigar factories, Chinchales mm -hmm. in Miami. Mm. And unfortunately, you know, those people that came from Cuba, eventually they started, you know, dying off. Uh, you know, their kids were, didn't want to get into the cigar right. business because it was not really a lucrative business. And I got in it because, you know, uh, in spite of the fact that I loved playing music and wanted to be a jazz musician, in the end, that was what I really wanted to do, be a cigar maker. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, being a musician, what do you listen to when you blend? What do you listen to <laughs> when you smoke? What, what's, what's, what's I, listen, I listen to, look, I listen to, you know, I, li I can listen to classical music. Oh. I listen to um, um, uh, Cuban music a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I listen to uh, uh, a lot of different musics. But I think that, uh, you know, what kind of defines, you know, what I like about the industry, you know, the cigars that I make, is a, uh, is a, uh, a song by uh, Chick Corea called Spain. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I know very well, yeah. yeah. You know, you have that. That's kind of what defines my, uh, you know, what I, how I see my cigars evolve. All right. Pretty good. But I, li I like to listen to all types of music. Yeah, you know? I love Cuban jazz. I, I listen to a yeah. lot of jazz yeah. generally, but yeah. even though I play a lot of rock and roll, but yeah, I just love that, <laughs> that stuff. Pro I probably listen to it more because I appreciate it and I, can I can't play it. Yeah. I'd rather just listen to it and try and let me to tell you, there are a lot to of, do it. There, you know, people don't realize there's a lot of musicians, a lot of rock musicians that smoke mm -hmm. cigars. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it's just a natural. Okay. So, nice. so we have the Wavell and the Inch. Mm -hmm. We have the Wavell, we have the Inch, we, we have uh, the Davidoff. Right. Uh, we have... Oh, so that, that's one of his... Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, oh, that, yeah. That the Davidoff from Cuba, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one counts. And then... Uh, and then we have, I mean, one outside my, you know, my lines that I, that I, uh, that really impressed me uh, uh, was the uh, Arturo Fuentes Chateau, the, the hmm. Rothschild. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, that was yeah. a cigar that really uh, impressed that's me. That's a really, that's been a very consistent cigar over the years, too. Yes, very yeah. consistent. What is, it, what is it that brings that one to mind? Or what is well, it I, like, I like the size, 
you know, okay. the size and the blend was just, you know, the creaminess in that blend. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily overpowering, but it just had a lot of flavor, a lot of complexity. And, uh, you know, that was one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, cigars, all-time cigars. And then I think another one that, uh, that I think we were, like we were talking before, mm -hmm. is the inaugural 2009. That to me was a, you know, completely different than whatever I had done before. Mm -hmm. Like this cigar that, that we're smoking now, and it just you know it, it just kind of brought me back to that Davidoff at that time. Huh? You know? Interesting. The 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 flavors, the you know, it wasn't over, you know, it wasn't strong, mm -hmm. but it had a lot of you know flavors and and uh, and complexity, and it had some of that creaminess mm -hmm. that I uh, enjoy so much in the cigar. So what we're smoking today is the E.P. Carrillo Family Series Encore. Encore yeah. A Nicaraguan Puro. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say you were you were going for when you were creating this blend? Well, I was going for you know first of all, um, I made a, a blend similar to this uh, before I left Journal, which was called the Artesanos of Miami, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. I loved that blend, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I started working with this particular blend, I wanted to do something similar in the sense of you know the the creaminess so i guess you could say kind of a blend of the uh, inaugural mm -hmm. and that cigar i wanted some of the smoothness i wanted some of the uh you know complexity the the flavors of the uh of the um, inaugural but maybe some of the strength of the uh artisans in miami that i made back in 2007 i think it was right. and now the inaugural was the first Yes. Real EP Carrillo. Yes. EPC cigars. Right. Cigar. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how was, I mean, is there something you remember about how that was received? I remember reading that that was it very wasn't, limited. It was, and, and I have to say, you know, when I, when I made that cigar, you know, people were expecting me to really come out with a, you know, another Gloria Cubana, another Serie R. Mm -hmm. And, you know, quite frankly, I wanted to, to do something that was different. Now, uh, at that time, uh, unfortunately, it was received okay, but it was not what we expected as far as the, the volume. But I, I'm very proud, I'm very happy that I you know, made that decision to make that cigar and not come out with something that was going to be another Gloria or another Rico right. or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, because I wanted to, to you know, send a, a message, you know, you know, this is a different E.P. Carrillo. And I also out of respect for my former company, you know, because I mean, I don't think it would have been fair for me to come out and say, yeah, let's make another CBR or another <laughs> Gloria Corona. That that yeah. wouldn't have been the mm -hmm. right yeah. thing to do, especially the way those the way those people treated mm -hmm. me. So, what did what did people first say when they set their eyes on the inch for the first time? Big seventy ring or bigger. 64 ring, <laughs> 70 ring. Well, scenario. it's uh, let me tell you, that's I have to say that's. Probably our biggest seller overall in, in all the lines. Yeah. You know, the 64, the H64, that's probably our biggest seller in, in, in all, all, all of wow. our lines. And the 70 also is very popular uh, in Europe. Yeah. You know, that's a very popular cigar in Europe. It's amazing. It they is. They smoked all those thin cigars all those exactly. years. Exactly. And so now they have something that, you know, it's a revolution. Know, it's <laughs> and we, you know, we, what we've noticed, See, what we've noticed <laughs> is that, you know, the inch, I mean, there's a lot of big ring gauge cigars out there. Sure. But people keep coming back to the inch. That's you amazing. Know? It's yeah. more expensive than some of the other cigars, mm. but people keep coming back because the, uh, you know, what we offer in it, the taste profiles, the, the blends, mm. are, are very unique to, uh, to us. One more landmark smoke. What would you say? No. Out, of, out of your own portfolio. My favorite, okay, my favorite. And I love torpedoes. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorites is the uh, Regalias Acevias. And that particular blend of mm -hmm. La Historia, okay. whenever I smoke that cigar, it just, you know, I say, hey, don't forget me because <laughs> I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I really, I'm really proud of those, you know, La Historia blend. And of course, listen, nowadays, there's so many, you know, great blends out there. You know, I smoked, uh, you know, different cigars from different factories. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of good, a lot of good cigars out there, you know. Uh, I mean, there's, believe me, there's more than five that I could say, right. yeah, this is really, this is really good. Mm -hmm. so.
Nice. All right. Well, I, I appreciate this trip down memory lane. I this picked up nice. something as he was talking. Yeah. Because you know, because we talk music all the time. Sure. We both sure. Music. He's done something with cigars that the best bands do with their music. If you notice, the best bands, they don't repeat themselves. The second album doesn't sound like the first album. The third, those bands tend to go away. If you think about Led Zeppelin and the Beatles or any of these big bands mm -hmm. that are, even the jazz musicians too, mm -hmm. they keep reinventing themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Ernesto has been doing here. And he said it. He says, I just don't want, I don't want another uh, Siri no. R. Right. We don't need it. We had that. No, we have that. And yeah. I, think that's, I think that's part of your Yeah, it's a question of always, is, always, you know, be evolving, you know, I mean, and, and I think nowadays, you know, people that, that uh, smoke cigars, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, or drink whiskeys or beers or whatever, you know, they want us something, you know, they always go back to their, to their core, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whiskeys or wines or whatever, but they always want to try something new. Yeah. And I think that, you know, in our case, it's not about, you know, being the biggest company or, you know, it's about right. being a company that's, you know, different and whenever you try one of our cigars, it's going to be special to us. Because if I know that somebody's using X, a certain type of tobacco or mm -hmm. doing whatever, you know, I want to stay away from that. Okay. Now, you know? Right. You got a certain drink that you like to pair with a cigar? If you're going to sit and you know you're going to be able to relax with a cigar and it's not work-related, you're not testing a blend, you yeah. just want to relax, you have a favorite something that goes with it, whether it be a food or drink or something? Yeah, well, I don't drink anymore, you know, but when I when I used to drink, I used to love uh, wild turkey 100% proof, 100, 130%. <laughs> Yikes. And that, to me, you know, that always left the, you know, what I liked about that mm -hmm. is that when you drink it, you know, in your throat, you feel that, you know, not burned, but, you know, it's just a, uh, a, the taste of the barrel, you know. <laughs> right. Some of the, and that's what I like in a cigar also, you know. When I smoke a cigar, mm -hmm. I want to feel it also in, in the throat where you have that, you know, nuttiness. You have mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, spice, or you have the pepper, you know. It just, you just feel like you, man, you've, mm -hmm. you've got something special here. How about you, coffee guy at all? Coffee I drink, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, once does, in a while. Does it go, go well with a cigar? Um, or, or not your favorite combo? It's not really my favorite combo, no. Mm -hmm. I, I do drink coffee if I'm trying different blends, you know, I right. want to clean my palate. Okay. I do, but not, not necessarily. I find that, you know, okay. coffee, sometimes, uh, one thing that works great, and I learned this from, from um, um, Mr. Edgar Coleman, man, may he rest in peace, is mm. tomato juice. Ah, really? Yeah, that really <laughs> cleans that. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's incredible, because that's some of that acidity, yeah, yeah, so it right. cleans the palate up completely. I gotta try that. Yeah, I like tomato just juice. straight <laughs> tomato juice. Yes, yeah. yes. I yeah. learned something right there. Yeah. What do you recommend to somebody for their first EPC cigar? If they've never had an EPC cigar, what's the first thing? The first, okay. We, you know, we, our our lines, okay. If you look at, we have like what's called like a pyramid. No? So we right. have the classic lines. Mm -hmm. And I, what I would start with, in that classic line, you can go from a mild to a medium to a, a fuller flavor smoke. So I would recommend starting with the New Wave Connecticut, okay, which okay, is yeah. a mild Makes flavorful mm -hmm. cigar. And then I would go maybe into the core line, mm -hmm. which is with the Habanos, and then go into like the Dusk, Dusk okay. or the Cardinal Impact. Those are more on the fuller side. Mm -hmm. So those for beginners, I think are, are perfect, you know, to get kind of a feel of what E.P. Carrillo is about. And then of course, you know, once you want to get into more, how do you say, maybe like a little bit different types of, of blends, you know, probably lead, the lead line, like the Reserva, the Oscuro, the uh, Capa de Sol, you know, the Elenco, which just came out with. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have the, the Dimensions, which are the sure. Inches and the original Rebel. Right. And mm -hmm. those are more, you know, powerful type of cigars, more, you know, for people like, you know, bigger ring gauges or longer or bigger cigars. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, then you have the like story and the Encore, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that should be more of when, I think when you have the time to really. Like a real relaxing cigar. Exactly, and, yeah. Make, yeah. So, but I would definitely start with the uh, New Wave Connecticut because okay. you're going to get, you know, you're going to get a Connecticut that I feel is different than a lot of Connecticut's that are out there now. Who would like to go back and revisit the whole La Gloria heritage with the collection Reserva? Well, let me tell you, that was, you know, that was something that uh, uh, really, to a certain degree, 
uh, caught me by surprise. And the reason we did that was because it was 25 years wow. since we had, since the Gloria had been raided. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I um, you know, I was very excited about it. Uh, it worked out to be a great project because you know it brought me back. As a matter of fact, the packaging had a lot to do with the packaging, with the, mm. the color of the boxes. Mm -hmm. The blend was basically, you know, something that uh, you know that I had done before, as far as the, uh, you know, the tobaccos that I use. And uh, for me, it was a, a very exciting project. You know, it brought me, um, you know, I mean, with you know, General and and myself, you know, the, our factories are close, and the relationship there has been, you know, tremendous That's great. even since I left. So it was, you know, for me it was very exciting, and um, I'm very happy the way that it turned out. You know, the we cigar are too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was another one that made our list. Yes, yes, we're telling him uh, uh, the other top thing. Top 25 we did. new cigars yeah. list from last year, a uh, a consensus favorite. Oh, great! Just fantastic. Yeah. And oh, I'm really liking this a lot too. This is the, the Encore, Encore right. a Nicaraguan port. The, for the what grabbed me when we started smoking this, the aroma. Well, I said that too. More than anything, and they else. lit it up. Yeah. Yeah. Just right from the first. Part. This, this is this is the majestic, overwhelming, lush kind of tinge with a little bit of sweet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and very warm room note yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. I had kind of a, I, I got a kind of a chocolatey note off of yes. it. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is this now is. I'm getting more of a more of a hearty uh -huh. aroma from uh -huh. it now. Yeah. 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 This is what I, this is what I, you know I you know I I, I would call I mean. It's to me. It's 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 kind of a classic smoke. You know, it's a smoke that I think that you know for people that have been smoking a long time mm -hmm. will enjoy. But I think it's also a smoke that like you know for beginners. Really? They, yeah, they can get into it. Now, huh. when you smoke a cigar, you have to understand there's different ways to smoke a cigar, and and we all know this. Mm -hmm. This cigar, I think you can control if you want the power, if you want the creaminess, if you want the spice or the peppery. You know. There's ways to get that, you huh. know, through retrohaling it, mm -hmm. sure. or you know, taking it to the throat, or just you know, keeping it in your mouth. You know, let it, just let the smoke uh, fill your palate. Mm -hmm. I just it did yeah. that. You let it roll across the tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little pin pricks here and there. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a little bit of spice that hangs out in the background. Well, I can't wait to try that. It's yeah. uh, worth worth the wait. And this is the <laughs> majestic. Right. Which is a 52, which I love. I like 52, 52 ring yeah. mm -hmm. by 52. five and a quarter? Five and three eighths. Five and three eighths. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and there box you go. pressed. Yes. Yeah, and I like that too. All right. So Sweet. So we got five cigars that made Ernesto yep. Perez Carrillo here with Cigar Advisor. Ernesto, appreciate you taking it. Thank you very much. With us Thank you. And a trip appreciate down memory lane. <laughs> Thank and you again, much continued success. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much.